The top of the 2022 NBA draft order is now set after Tuesday night's draft lottery, and the Orlando Magic have the number one overall pick, followed by the Oklahoma City Thunder and the Houston Rockets at number three. Matt, I got a very simple question for you out the gate. Which team has you the most excited of who they might pick based on where they have been falling uh, in the draft lottery? You know, one of the teams that's obviously the top teams are always going to be exciting to think about. But right. one in later on uh, towards the end of the the top 10 is the New Orleans Pelicans. I mean, this was a team that I think surprised everybody. Looked like they were just going to fall apart without Zion. They make the trade for CJ McCollum. Yeah. They're able to make it into the play in and then they get two wins over the Phoenix Suns uh, in a series that was a lot more exciting than I think anybody expected. Uh, so this is a team that if they can get Zion back, if they add another nice piece at eight, they might be a team to pay attention to for the entire season rather than just expect them to fall apart. And some of the guys that you see that might be available around there, uh, Johnny Davis, uh, A.J. Griffin, uh, Benedict Mathurin, even you know if you want to go big uh, with a Jalen Duran or go with a shooting guard like Ohai Abaji, that is a lot of excitement. That is some great options, some guys that aren't going to come in and probably take over, but they're going to be solid role players right from day one, and then you can grow them and groom them into superstars, possibly, or all-stars at least. Yeah. And so that's why I think it's very exciting. I think that the Pelicans are in a great situation right now, which is crazy to think, considering six months ago we thought they were – basically dead in the water yeah no doubt i mean it's going to be exciting to see what new orleans does because as you mentioned there's a, there's a lot of talent on their yeah. roster and, and people you can't underestimate the experience that comes with just making the playoffs and playing a series let alone you know a series against the reigning western conference champions the phoenix suns you know damn they're pushing them to the brink uh, i think there's a couple options for, for the pelicans there um that they could go and really um add to for this next season squad mm -hmm. somebody who can step in right away and, and contribute and I mean, if we've learned anything and I'm paying attention to what Dallas did, it, go get three and D guys, go yeah, get wings, exactly. go get a six, six or six, nine wing that can do everything. I mentioned some shooting guards, but AJ Griffin should be available there. And I feel like that might be a guy to pay attention to. Uh, and also Jeremy Sohan, uh, he's yeah. great as well. So yeah. I, I think like a, a wing, 3 and D guy. Yep. I love that you mentioned the wing, the 3 and D guys, um, because that's who I'm looking at for, for the Detroit Pistons, mm -hmm. who have the number five overall pick. I talked a few weeks ago that um, I believe that the Pistons, um, one of the four worst teams in the NBA this season, are going to be the first to kind of get out of that cellar of the NBA and make some noise. The main reason I said that was because of Cade Cunningham. I believe this young man is the future NBA superstar in the same build as, you know, a Luka Doncic, a LeBron James, maybe not to that level, but certainly of that same skill type uh, and build and whatnot. And with the number five overall pick that the Detroit Pistons have, I, I really would love to see them get Keegan Murray, the, the sophomore out of Iowa, who was arguably one of the best players in college basketball this season. 6'8", 6'11", wingspan, shot 40% from three can defend, um, has the size, and I think he'd be the perfect kind of wing complement for somebody like Cade Cunningham, who's ball dominant, who can facilitate for others. Um, I think adding shooting and size to that that Pistons um, front court would, would just would just be awesome. Yeah. We talked about it before. They already have some talent. They brought in Marvin Bagley, who I thought was a great addition in that front court mid midway through the season. And you bring in somebody like Keegan Murray, who can make a splash as early as year one, it makes somebody who's making a lot of money on that roster like Jeremy Grant very expendable, somebody that you can maybe flip and get some other pieces down the line. I think that, I think that would be the, be awesome for Detroit, and that would really supercharge this thing uh, and make me look pretty smart in the process by saying you yeah. know, they'd be the first they, out of that bottom four to kind of you know maybe make the playoffs. And, and again, I think Kate Cunningham is the key, and I think the the right move is to find a pair, somebody who can really complement Cade in his very very elite game. What do you make of that? I mean, I think it makes sense. I think there's also going to be a few guards that are available then, like a, a Shane Sharp or a Jaden mm -hmm. Ivey that could Love be interesting Ivy. in the sense of having somebody to play off the ball with Cade. Yep. Uh, but I do like Keegan. I mean, Keegan Murray was an absolutely insane player for Iowa, made Iowa relevant this year Seriously. by himself. Uh, and, and the fact that, you know, they could come in and, and basically replace Jeremy Grant, possibly with a guy that plays exactly like Jeremy Grant, exactly. is pretty impressive. I've also seen comparisons to Pascal, Pascal Siakam. If he could even be half of that, yeah. uh, that's going to be a great, you know, pickup. So I, I definitely like where Detroit is, is situated. And I like the Murray choice uh, as a possible uh, pairing with 
Cade Cunningham. No doubt about it. Obviously, I said at the top that the Orlando Magic have gotten the number one overall pick in, in this year's NBA draft. Who do you think the Magic should be selecting with that first pick? Now, it seems like the consensus is uh, Chet Holmgren, and I'm, but I'm going to go against the grain a little bit, and I really do like Paolo Bancaro. I think that uh, obviously there's some excitement around the potential of Chet, but Bancaro, if you watched him play at all for Duke this year, and especially towards the end of the tournament, this is a guy that is absolutely NBA ready. He's going to go in there and be a force to reckon with right from day one. And I think that, you know, not only that, but he's going to just continue to improve past that. The, the, I think of in the past few years, there's been some picks, you know, like a LaMelo ball where you went with the guy that was more ready right away. Now, Anthony Edwards has definitely shown that the potential can be reached, mm -hmm. but uh, Bancaro is a guy that if you go and get him at one, you're not going to be disappointed because he's going to be right away one of the front runners for Rookie of the Year and, and going to give you some really good help uh, on both sides of the ball. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. I think Paolo is certainly worthy of a number one overall pick. I would say the same for Chet Holmgren. I would also say the same for, for Jabari Smith, who I, think, who I wouldn't be surprised at all who went number one, maybe number one overall, number two overall uh, as well. But um, to me, I, I think you'd be crazy if you pass on somebody, uh, a unicorn such as Chet Holmgren, and, and you're one of those, those crazy folks. Right. Um, listen, this is somebody in Chet Holmgren who is seven foot. I, I get this sub 200 pound frame, but we've seen other guys, um, you know, come in kind of wiry, lanky, and still make a, a long productive career in the NBA. This is somebody who shoots 39% from deep, who can block shots, who is not just a sieve on the defensive end, who can protect your rim. That's important at the next level. And this is this is still an athletic dude. I think people need to not overthink things. Chad Holmgren was one of the most sought after prized high school recruits yeah. that we've seen maybe in yeah. American history, especially recently. Went right away um, to Gonzaga, one of the best college basketball programs in the country, mm -hmm. on one of the best teams. Instantly was probably their best player. Played throughout the tournament very well. And again, this is a seven-foot unicorn. Somebody who can shoot the ball from three, can shoot it from all three levels, has touch around the rim. Um, I think that's exactly what Orlando needs. I know they have some big men. Um, and they, they got some size already in their front court. But again, this is somebody who I believe in, Chet Holmgren, that you just don't pass up on if you got the number one overall pick. So that's what I'm expecting Orlando to manage to do. I wouldn't hate it. If they went with Paulo, yeah. I love him. I wouldn't hate it. Hey, they I went mean, with Jabari. He but. might be seven foot. Paulo's 6'10 and a dog, and he, <laughs> he's going to go out and be able to get you 20, we'll uh, which is why I think the OKC Thunder, if they end up getting yeah. him, they might make me yeah. a Nostradamus as far as being <laughs> one of the first four out of yeah. that bottom four. Yeah, I think the, uh, Oklahoma City is, is, is sitting pretty well. Obviously, they got the number two overall pick. Yes. I think they're going to be happy with whoever falls in them at number two. Mm -hmm. And obviously, they have the number 12 overall pick as well and a treasure trove of picks. Um, over the next few years. So they'll be set up all right if they make the right decisions. Should be an easy one for them at two, mm -hmm. whoever falls to them. But but uh, can't wait to see how this draft um, kind of pans out after Tuesday night's lottery. But this was a fun episode, just a simple question. Catch us on oh, yeah. tomorrow's episode. We'll be talking with ESPN senior researcher Jenny LaCroix about the WNBA season. But for this episode, for Scott Proctor, my guy Matt Morris right here, we'll see you then. <laughs>